Good morning, welcome back to another vlog. I decided last night to film a day in my life today because I'm doing a lot of errands and a lot of things I've been putting off for a long time and they probably won't take that long but I've been procrastinating and I feel like vlogging always helps me be more productive because if I don't wanna do something, I'm like, well, I have to do it because I'm vlogging. I actually think it'll be a fun day. I don't have that much work to get done, I'm not gonna lie, so most of the day I've set aside to just do all the stuff that I've been putting off. I tried to get up a little bit earlier today, I didn't really work, but I've just been having the worst sleeping issues lately. Um, I've had sleeping problems, struggle with insomnia since I was 12 and it kind of comes and goes, but lately it's been really bad. And I don't know if it's because of Fergus and potty training, but it might be. I usually get up with him in the middle of the night to let him out and then Matt gets up with him in the morning and I sleep in a little bit later because I was up with him during the night. Um, and that's been working fine for a while, but for the last like week, week and a half, I just can't sleep at all. I'll sleep until maybe like midnight or 1 a.m. and then I can't sleep between the hours of like 1 a.m. and 5 a.m. consistently and it's been like this for over a week and a half. And I will do all my tricks, I'll do everything I can think of, I'll take all my supplements, I'll do all of the sleepy time tricks that I've learned over the last like 13 years and they're just not working right now. I literally feel like my brain is wired differently at the moment. And I'll just lay there in bed staring at the ceiling or like trying to read or do something to make myself tired and just doesn't work. So lately I've been sleeping in kind of late in the mornings to like 9.30 or 10 just because I'm not sleeping between 1 and 5 a.m. But I do have a lot to do today so I have forced myself to get up. Ugh. I think, I'm not sure why it's going on right now. It could be unrelated to Fergus completely. I have always been a light sleeper and I feel like I've trained my body to just be really hyper alert while I'm sleeping because the second I hear him whine to be let out because he has to go to the bathroom, I'd like jump awake and I go and I let him out. And so maybe that's it. Maybe I've just trained my body to be so sensitive to getting up multiple times in the middle of the night or every little noise jolting me awake that I don't know what I'm gonna do now to break it. Because now actually he doesn't have to go out that often. He usually only goes out like once in the night now, but I still can't sleep. So hopefully the older he gets and the less he has to be let out during the night, the longer he can hold it, the more I can just get all of this in check because I don't even know what's going on. Anyway, I am in a good mood and I'm excited to get my stuff done. I'm excited to get all these things crossed off of my to-do list. I'm going to be driving today. A little bit nervous about that. I haven't driven in about two months. So I'm hyping myself up for that. I want to show you guys what I'm looking at right now because the leaves are changing in Virginia and it's gorgeous. Look how beautiful the leaves are. One of my favorite things about this apartment is that we do get this view of trees. Doesn't make you forget that you're in a city, but it helps. Yesterday I ordered new bedding from Parachute Home because I've been dying to try them out. I'm not in love with my current bedding. I'm really excited for that to get here. I got these really pretty mossy olivey green sheets. Looking forward to that. Good morning, Matthew. Good morning, man. How was the bean this morning? <laughs> Took three shits in the coffee. <laughs> took three shits in the carpet and we just washed it too over the weekend That's what hurt the most, I yeah he's napping right now yeah he's happy and it's great in his bed he's chilling he's, he doesn't yeah. he's fine he doesn't know what he did yeah I went and put a new fresh fresh patch of grass the old one out to the recycle uh, to the bin and by the time I got back I found him squatting over the carpet and uh, it was pretty devastating to find Thank you for your service this morning. It hurts a little more because we just washed this rug bowl over the weekend. Like two days ago, we washed this rug bowl, uh, which was really easy actually. Big fan, but to have him do that <laughs> on a freshly cleaned carpet. He's in that stage right now where he'll go three days in a row, not a single accident, and then he'll have five accidents in a day. And you're like, what's going on? Yeah, what what's going on? I'm going to make a delicious flavored decaf coffee. I have had a little bit more caffeine lately than normal on days where I've had like maybe max two hours of sleep and I just can't take it anymore. But I don't want to get my body more used to caffeine because I feel like that will just make the sleep worse. But I've been a big fan of decaf iced lattes lately and I'll show you how I make them. Sidebar, I fake tanned yesterday and I contoured my face with fake tan and I feel 10 times prettier than I usually do with no makeup. I don't mind myself with no makeup, of course, 
but like I'm feeling pretty good right now. Okay, so this is probably not the right way to do any of this, but it's how I do it. And I've really been enjoying my little morning coffee. So I have these decaf Nespresso pods. I don't know what they're called. They are just the gold one. The gold one is decaf. And I'm gonna make a one of these using the double button on here. And just a random mug. And then I'm gonna take this and put it in the freezer to cool off for, I don't know, like five, 10 minutes while I do everything else because I'm making an ice drink and this is really hot. I actually worked at a coffee shop very briefly. I don't know if I've ever told you guys this, but I worked at a coffee shop very briefly and so I know that this espresso is going to go bitter because I haven't mixed it with anything and I'm just shoving it in a freezer. But I also know that I don't really care if it's bitter because I'm gonna put a lot of flavored syrups in it and it's decaf anyway. So can you even really call it espresso? Like probably not, right? That could all be wrong. I worked at the coffee shop for a very short amount of time. <laughs> this has been my favorite fun drink of choice cup lately. I got a pack of four off of Amazon. I'll put a link on my storefront. I just think they're very cute. I like that there's a metal straw instead of a glass straw. Oh, it's like very thick and sturdy and the straw has a very I think wide diameter, which for some reason I really like. I'm gonna fill this with ice. This is the milk I have right now. I don't like it. It's macadamia nut milk and it's overpriced and it doesn't froth very well. It doesn't taste rich or creamy. I don't know, I guess it's good for you, but I don't like it. So far I haven't found a plant milk that I like more than oat except for coconut. And I do like cashew, but coconut and cashew are also just really expensive. So I don't know, it was fun to try, but I wouldn't get this again. I really like these Truvani sugar-free syrups. I have the French vanilla one. I also have this one, which I like by the brand Skinny Syrup. It's peanut butter cup. I had this one yesterday. It was so good. Peppermint is one of my favorite flavors in the world though. So I'm gonna do this one. I'm gonna put two pumps just in the bottom of the cup. And then I'm gonna put four pumps in my milk frother. I love this thing. I use it every day. I use it for my matcha, coffee, also from Amazon. Fill that up. I don't know why I'm even frothing it. I don't think this stuff froths at all. I don't think it has a high enough fat content. That's why oat froths really well. I don't know. What is your favorite high frothing plant milk? Let me know. The freezer decaf goes in the cup. And then my flavored milk, which isn't frothed, but the frother does blend the syrup in the milk, so. You know, it's also just fun to use. It's just part of the morning routine. I like being very slow in the morning because you guys know I just like taking my time in general. And then here we go. Look at this a little taste test. Oh, it's so good. Oh, I'm just so in love with this desk and this chair. I guess it kind of still looks messy, but I feel like it looks so great. I love coming in here in the morning and sitting down and doing my little things. I just got this candle warmer for in here because it's a small space and I'm allergic to a lot of fragrances. It doesn't really cause an issue in most of my life, but if a candle is burning in a small space for a long time, my allergies will really kick off. Also candle warmers in general are just a little bit better for you because you're not burning stuff in your house all the time. So that's fun. And it looks kind of cute. Oh my God, there's hair everywhere. I shed a lot, Fergus is starting to shed. This household is overrun by red and black hair constantly. Oh, if you noticed all of these candles sitting on my desk, I went through my candle collection and I had to purge a lot of things. My candle collection was getting out of hand, you guys. I love candles. They are one of my favorite ways to romanticize your life. They are critical for hibernation era and they just make me really happy. So I had to go through and I actually pulled out a bunch of ones I'm going to give to friends, family and friends. Ones that I just don't reach for as often, but they're still good. Like some of them haven't even been burned yet. And then these are candles that one, are pretty much burned out and two, have cute jars because I love making my own candles. Last winter I made a lot of candles and they just, they're better for you. You can control the ingredients that go in them. I use beeswax and an essential oil, so they're all natural. Better for you. It's very fun. It's the coziest little winter fall time hobby. And you get to reuse stuff, which is nice. So I pulled, actually they're like mostly all green. I just pulled candles that are all burned out or almost all the way burned out and have cute jars and I'm going to extract the remnants of the wax from each of these and then make new candles at some point. I don't know, probably not in this vlog, but at some point. It's morning, which means it is planner time and manifestation time. 
I put out a podcast episode a couple of days ago, Manifest Your Dream Life, and I talked about my personal manifestation routine and my approach to manifestation, just dog hair all over this. And I really, really like the episode, and so far it seems you guys do too, so check that one out. It's on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, and Amazon Podcasts. Basically wherever you get your podcasts. Um, you can check that one out. I'm gonna do these, and then I'm gonna do boring computer stuff this morning because this afternoon I'm going out to run errands and I wanna just get all this stuff done beforehand. When I say boring, you guys, I mean these are tasks I have been putting off for absolutely no reason other than the fact that I don't wanna do them. I'm talking like scheduling a dentist appointment, paying the property tax on my car, paying my credit card bill. I have to research a new health insurance because my coverage expires soon and enrollment starts on November 1st. And I got a letter from the state of Virginia saying that my current health care is through the federal marketplace, which I can't access anymore. So on November 1st, I have to choose state health insurance. I don't even really know. I have to figure out what's going on with that because I can't afford to lose coverage even for a month because I'm crazy and my medical bills are Hi. Oh, I have to go through my QuickBooks. Usually I go through my QuickBooks like every two weeks and I just make sure everything's being categorized correctly. I am very particular about the way that I manage my finances. I am very into financial planning and I track every single penny that comes in, every single penny that comes out of all of my bank accounts. I have seven bank accounts because I own two small businesses technically. Um, and I haven't really been tracking that. I need to go in QuickBooks and just make sure everything is looking good because I have a meeting with my accountant soon and he's gonna look at my QuickBooks and be like, Mary, you're making my job harder than it needs to be. I also have to do a little bit of tax prep because now we've officially entered Q4 and I wanna make sure I'm in a good place to approach the 2024 tax season. I think I made a vlog like at the start of this year I was talking about tax prep. Sometimes I feel like half my life is tax prep, which is fine, I mean, I love working for myself and I don't want to stop working for myself, but the one of the parts I don't like is how much time you have to spend doing your taxes, like constantly. And again, none of this is hard. None of this is hard. None of this is probably gonna be that time consuming. This is not gonna take me more than, I don't know, an hour, maybe an hour and a half. So why have I been procrastinating this? No idea, no idea. I self-sabotage, that's why, according to my therapist. I'm gonna do that in a second. This is my favorite part of the morning. This, this is the reason I get out of bed in the morning. Good boy! Good boy! Yes, Fergus is so big! Fergus is so big and strong! Look at him. Oh my, he's in the phase of teething where he must have something, something in his mouth constantly. Oh, you don't want that. Fergus wants flesh. We are trying to slowly get him used to being brushed because his fur is starting to come in like adult fur. He is very skeptical of it. Yeah, I know, it's weird, isn't it? Nothing to be scared of. Gentle. Good boy. Good boy, Fergie. Only big, you, you're getting brushed because you're a big boy. Because you're a big, big boy, yeah. Oh, you like that? Does that feel good? <gasps> big stretches, big stretches. Do another big stretch. Oh, so many scratches. Oh. Fergus's morning routine <coughs> consists of being a good but stinky boy. Doesn't it, Fergie? Guys, look how big he is. He's huge, he weighs, what was it, 27 pounds on Saturday? So probably 30 pounds by now. That means he has tripled his body weight. <coughs> in the last six weeks. Oh, and you've got attitude this morning. I am making some breakfast. Let me de-influence you about something for a second. These better bagels, I got them to try because I've seen them everywhere. Yes, you're mad that I'm making food and you're not eating. 
He's at the he's realized that the kitchen is the source of all food. You have breakfast still in your bowl, and he gets attitude. Gold retrievers are 50% love, 50% sass. Got these bagels because I'd heard a lot about them on social media, and I like that they had loads of protein. They just don't taste that good, and maybe the other flavors taste better, but this I don't know. They just taste like a bagel that someone's added extra protein to, you know? Like Fergus thinks he's starving even though he hasn't finished his breakfast. Fergus loves Greek yogurt on oh, these lick mats to keep the bean happy. I'm gonna make you work for it though. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna make you do some tricks. Oh yeah, now you're behaving. Now you're behaving. Notice how quiet he's being because he recognizes the lick mats and he knows he's about to get something. I don't wanna reinforce the barking, but also like shush. As I was saying, these better bagels, or at least the plain ones, they just taste too healthy for my taste. And I love healthy food. You guys know I love healthy food. They're plant-based, no added sugar. You have to keep them refrigerated. They are ridiculously expensive. I think they only come with like six bagels. It's literally like $20. And I don't know, they also have 26 grams of protein per bagel though, which is amazing. If you're trying to hit protein goals, it's good for that. It's just on terms of taste alone, I wouldn't try the plain one yet. Maybe I'll try the everything bagel, everything bagel flavor, but if that's not good either, I just don't like these very much. I'm gonna toast this. While that is toasting, I'm gonna take my supplements. I am a supplement girl. I'm nothing if not a supplement girly. So I guess it's late in the morning to be eating breakfast, but I personally can't eat anything like right when I wake up. I get so nauseous. I feel like I'm gonna throw up if I eat first thing in the morning. Also, Matt and I had a Mexican food feast last night. It was so good but I've had a pounding headache ever since and my stomach hurts so bad. Um, and I know it's cause it was horrible for me, but am I gonna let that stop me from ordering Mexican food again in like five to seven business days? No, because that's the price you pay for things you love. But I don't feel well. My stomach hurts, my head hurts, gross. So today we're doing this Hilma gas and bloat relief for my stomach. JS Health immune support, almost cold and flu season. JS Health probiotic, JS Health fish oil, my Nutrafol, obviously I'm gonna be taking my mood stabilizer, like my meds, my anxiety medicine as well. And then I also have my Symbiotica vitamin C because there isn't enough vitamin C in um, the immune support for my liking. It has 500 milligrams of vitamin C. And when it's this time of year, I like to have a thousand milligrams daily, which I know is a lot, but like with the Symbiotica vitamin C and the immune support, this is more vitamin C than I would normally take day to day but because I don't feel well right now, and I'm like 99% sure it's because of the Mexican food. But because I don't feel well right now, I just am being extra, 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 extra cautious. Bagel is toasted. I'm gonna do half butter and honey and half butter and honey and peanut butter. My favorite butter right now is Kerrygold, pure Irish butter. Oh my God, it's so good. I love it when butter is really yellow <clears throat> instead of pale, like I love a nice yellow butter. So when I was a kid, there was this brief period of time where my parents had actual like dairy butter in the house instead of vegan butter. I don't know why. Honestly, my parents got like more and more and more into the veganism and the health, the holistic nutrition, all this stuff as I got older. So I can remember a time in my very like early years where there was real butter in the house. And I used to eat that butter. Probably the reason they took the butter away <laughs> is because I was eating the butter with a spoon. I was literally opening sticks of butter and eating the stick like it was a popsicle. Um, so that's probably why they took the butter away, but butter is still one of my favorite foods. A nice high quality salted butter, oh, little peanut butter on one half. This household absolutely runs on peanut butter. When this house runs out of peanut butter, it's like a crisis. I Uber eats this peanut butter to the house yesterday morning because I wasn't able to run out and get it immediately, but I needed it immediately. Put a little honey on the bagel. My grandfather was a beekeeper when he was alive. Rest in peace, he was the best man ever. I miss him constantly. He was a beekeeper and I grew up eating his honey, like wild Virginia honey, and no honey has ever prepared since, ever. My parents still have a little bit of it at the house. He had so much honey in his stores when he died that it's taken us a couple years to go through it all. But I'm kind of afraid to go through it all because then it means that my grandfather's honey just doesn't exist anymore. I don't know if I'm ready to live in a world where there's no honey. Anyway, here's my breakfast. 
it'll get the job done. I have fantastic news. I only had one meeting today and they just rescheduled till tomorrow. So the world is just my oyster today. That's such a good feeling. I'm gonna get ready now so I can go do my outside of the house stuff. Favorite makeup prep combo lately has been Peach and Lily Glass Skin Serum. This is my third bottle, I think. Loving this Paula's Choice Barrier, Barrier Repair Moisturizer. I also like the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream right now, but I'm going with this one. And the Summer Friday Sunscreen. I like to keep my makeup prep skincare pretty simple so that my makeup doesn't like, you know? I forgot how good fake tanning my face makes me feel. I didn't fake tan my face for a while because I got my eyebrows, um, I got powder brows, like I got eyebrow tattoos. They are very, very, very light. They look good. I guess it's better to be too light than to be too dark, but I'm going in for a touch up in December, I think. And I'm definitely gonna have them go a lot darker. I do like them, I can tell the difference, but they're just light. But I also like a very dark eyebrow. Like I like an almost black eyebrow. But anyway, what was I even saying? I didn't fake tan my face for a while because I got my eyebrows tattooed and they were healing but they are pretty much fully healed now. It's been over two weeks. I'm just feeling bronzy. Well, right now I'm feeling red because I have rosacea and whenever I touch my face, it gets red. But if you have sensitive skin, a tip I learned from my dermatologist is to only use mineral sunscreens. I started using only mineral sunscreens and I do feel like my skin got a little bit better. You guys, I was doing my makeup the other day and there were these black spots in my makeup sponge and I realized it was mold. And to be honest, I hadn't replaced my makeup sponge or cleaned it in a while, so it's my fault. But that was not a good feeling for my OCD. <laughs> Tip, after you wet your beauty blender, squeeze out the extra water in a paper towel or just a clean towel. You want the beauty blender to be wet, but not dripping wet. It'll make your makeup look really good. Tarte Hydrating Primer. It has a pretty strong coconut scent, so if you're not into that, beware. A little flawless filter on the high points. Hourglass Hydrating Skin Tint. Just gonna do a little tiny bit. Blend that in all together with the flawless filter. Pixie On The Glow Bronzing Stick. I put it on the brush first and then I put it on my cheekbones and forehead. Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Radiant Concealer in 4.5. This is super light. I ran out of my Kosas Revealer Concealer a while ago and I haven't restocked on it. In the meantime, I've just been using other concealers and there are loads of good concealers on the market, you know, like so many. I'm gonna use the Kylie Skin Concealer in a darker shade on my face. There are so many good concealers out there, but there's just something about the Kosas. If I have time today, I'd love to restock on it. I don't know if I will, but I would love to. I'm gonna do a dash of the Fenty Beauty Cream Blush in Petal Poppin. What is this? This is a Sephora 78 brush. Just a little bit. I layer cream products and liquid products, so I don't need the liquid products to look like the finished product because it isn't. Huda Beauty Pink Powder, it's in the shade Cherry Blossom Cake, pink for under eyes because it brightens and I love a very, very bright under eye. I feel like a super bright under eye helps give your makeup that makeup-y, like just put together look. And I do use it everywhere, which is maybe not good, I don't know. Why use two separate powders, I don't know. I'm gonna let that sit. Moving on to eyebrows. They are tattooed now, but like I said, they're really light. So I'm still gonna do them, just not do my normal routine. Still gonna use the best brow gel of all time, NYX Brow Glue. But instead of filling in with powder like I would normally do after the gel, I'm gonna go straight in with my eyebrow pen which is always the NYX brow pen in black. I'm brushing off this powder. I'm going really out of order today, I don't know why. I'm gonna curl my eyelashes. This is a Tweezerman Lash Curler. It's fine. L'Oreal Lash Paradise Primer. And I'm gonna let this dry while I do my powder, bronzer, and blush. I'm doing something very different today and I'm not using the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Bronzer. I am instead using this bronzer that's in this Tarte palette, the Tarte Inspire Amazonian Clay palette. I'm gonna use this one because I think I have finally run out of that one hourglass bronzer. I've had it for going almost like two years now and I have used it literally every single time I've done my makeup. Um, and it is finally on its very last leg. So I need to get more of it. This doesn't look bad at all. Like I do like this bronzer and there's just something about the Hourglass Ambient Lighting product that looks so amazing. 
I can still get some out of this blush though. This is Hourglass Ambient Lighting Sublime Flush. It's hard though. I feel like this blush is so old now that there's like a film over the product and it's really hard to pick up on the brush. I know that's so gross. But again, I've had like this specific one for almost two years and it's been just a huge go-to of mine. It does show up, but it's like not popping the way it used to. And I think it's just because it's so old. We're getting there, I promise. L'Oreal Lash Paradise Mascara. Okay, one of my favorite everyday lip combos. Benetint, just a little bit for a nice rosy, rosy glow on the lips. Let that dry. And then any brown toned lip liner of choice that works for your skin tone, this is stripped down by MAC, but my favorites are Nude Truffle by NYX and Iconic Nude by Charlotte Tilbury. And then do a little overlining. Blend the lip liner in with your finger and then just any clear balm. And the clear balm will change throughout the day. And that's the face, you guys. I was planning on leaving 20 minutes from now. I think that's still fine. My hair is flat because I blew it out yesterday. It's <sighs> My hair is either flat because I blew it out or it's frizzy because I left it natural. No in between. I'm adding some texture spray just for the roots. This is by Living Proof. I also really like the Oribe or Ribe one. Let's get dressed. I want to wear this sweater. It's from Grey Bandit. It's like this beautiful little cardigan and I think it's so cute. So I'll probably just put like a bodysuit. Okay, I just put on this little bodysuit. These are Drew Avenue jeans. I like them because they're not too loose leg and not too slim. I also like the rise. They're like a really solid low to mid rise and they're comfy. So cute. I was wondering like, why don't I feel right right now? What's wrong? And I realize I'm not wearing any of my normal jewelry. I took all my jewelry off to fake tan yesterday. I haven't put it back on yet. Ah! Okay, we've got Mr. David Yerman. Mr. David Yerman. A Seiko watch. It's vintage. Got it off Depop. We have wedding ring and 888 signet ring. Can you see that? There you go, 888. My Rellery necklace. Rellery Leo pendant that I never, ever, ever take off usually. I got this three years ago. I have barely taken it off in the last three years. Got this Cartier love ring from The Real Real. It was a very good price because it has somebody else's initials and wedding date engraved on the inside of the band. But hey, it was a steal, so I don't really mind. And then this really cool bracelet is from my grandmother. She let me and my sisters pick out jewelry from her collection. And I really like this bracelet. It means a lot to me. I think we may finally be ready. I forgot to show, these are my fragrances of the day. This is a Fleur hair and body spray. And then this is this beautiful peach perfume. And I'm wearing these like juicy fruity scents because I'm currently wearing this Josie Moran whipped argan oil body butter in the vanilla apricot scent. I wanted to tie all of those in together. My final accessory is my glasses because I can't drive without them. I haven't driven. Ah, in about a month and a half, almost two months, I think the last time I drove was the first weekend in September. Um, and we are now approaching the end of October, so that's fun. If you are new to my channel and you're thinking, what's going on, welcome. I have really bad driving anxiety because of this car accident that I was in. And that was, how long ago was that, like eight years ago? Seven years ago and it's still really bad. It's actually getting a lot better though. Uh, we got this car this year and this has helped a lot because in this is the first new car I've ever owned or driven and when you go from driving like 2000 cars to 2023 cars, the difference in safety features is just astronomically large and it does help my anxiety a lot because of course I was feeling a little bit more anxious in, you know, a 20 something year old car, or even I think the last car I had prior to this one was a 2008. Um, and yeah, the difference in safety features is just crazy, but it's also a lot to get used to. But I do feel safer just from having stuff like a backup camera or that thing that like on the mirrors that lets you know if there's someone in your blind spot, will I ever trust that? No, I will always still manually check my blind spot. But you know, just like I keep turning around to look behind me instead of relying on the backup camera, that's probably way more reliable than just me just looking. Anyway, we are headed out. First stop, I need to find a dry cleaner because someone, 
I'm not gonna name names. Someone in my family, not me, not Matthew, someone else, got car sick on the way home from puppy kindergarten and threw up all in the car and all. Why did that feel like karma for talking badly about Fergus? Um, he threw up in the car and it went all down in between the center console and the passenger seat. And we actually had to get the car detailed. It was so bad. We cleaned it ourselves and we couldn't get everything. We didn't have the right tools. Had to get the car detailed. And now I have to go take my suede aviator jacket to a dry cleaner because it's covered in puppy vomit. And again, I tried to clean it myself. I was like frantically Googling, how do you clean suede? Um, wasn't working. So dry cleaner is the first stop. Okay, we're here. This is the jacket in question. You'll recognize it. I've been wearing it nonstop lately. I'm trying not to let the sleeve with vomit touch me. It's my beautiful John Ashford. John Ashford jacket to the dry cleaners. Okay, that dry cleaners was closed. Excellent start. Back to the car, trying again. This is the first time I've ever parallel parked in this car. Granted, there's nothing in front of me, so all I had to do was back up, but still. Okay, I'm gonna try again. I have to hurry though, because I'm not paying for street parking for like two minutes, are you kidding me? Did you guys know? You probably did. Did you know that it takes $75 in three weeks to dry clean a suede jacket? That's almost as much money as the jacket cost because I got it second hand. I knew that suede was expensive. I mean, that's why I was trying to clean it myself at home. But $75 in three weeks, three weeks in the middle of fall and it's my favorite fall jacket. On top of the 200 bucks it took to detail, detail this car because Fergus decided to throw up in the most difficult spot of any car to clean, a spot that required getting the taking the passenger seat out of the car. Like literally the worst part in any car you could throw up in. I love him and he makes my life better. That was a lot. I'm going to the thrift store now because I have to drop off some donation bags and then I have to thrift some picture frames. I'll tell you about that in a second. Okay, we made it. I just dropped off my donation bags in the back, which is exciting because that means all of my donation stuff is now done. I have some more clothes in my house that um, haven't been bought on Poshmark yet. My Poshmark username is MarySkinner479. I'll link it in the description box. Um, so I have some more stuff to go on Poshmark. Hopefully that will all sell, but that's it. So fall closet clean out, except for the Poshmark stuff, is done. Now I need to go inside, I'm gonna thrift some picture frames. So in either my last vlog or two vlogs ago, I told you guys about the gallery wall I'm making in my office above the desk I was sitting at this morning. And I'm really excited about all the prints that I've been ordering because I have gone through a lot of decor style and personal style evolutions in the last like five, six years or so. You guys have seen the ones that have happened in the last like two years, but honestly it's been going on for a long time. And now that I'm getting older, 25 frontal lobe is if not fully developed almost all the way there funnily enough i just have looped right around back to both a clothing style and a home style that is extremely reminiscent of my mother and things i was surrounded with growing up because 25 was me just turning into my mom for real you know in the last year i have really figured out what i think my forever style is and over the last year i have been slowly collecting furniture pieces that really align with what i now know that i think is like my true style deep down i had so much fun experimenting with tons of different like clothing aesthetics and home styles so much fun experimenting but about a year ago last november i feel like I just came to this realization that what I really wanted to dress like, what I really want to decorate my house like, was my mom. And so in the last 12 months, I've been slowly gathering furniture like my prized possession wooden coffee table. That's an antique trunk, not an antique trunk. It's made to look like an antique trunk. Um, handmade, so beautiful. The woodworking is incredible. My beautiful wooden dresser, stuff in my office, some of my rug and my clothing as well, like just embracing. I don't know, I talked about this in a podcast episode. And listen, I'm like making my clothing style and my home aesthetic deeper than it needs to be, but this is how my brain works. Um, I said in a podcast episode called My Frontal Lobe is Developing and I'm Healing My Inner Child that I spent literally years, like, seven years running away from things in my life that reminded me of my hometown and my childhood and that extended to the clothes I wore, the music I listened to, the way I decorated my house, it extended to all of that because I was just running away from a lot of things. And the older that I get and the more I work on myself and the more time I spend in therapy and 
yeah, just the more work I do on myself, the more I realize that I actually really, really like a lot of things about different ways that I grew up. Not, not all the ways, you guys know, but certain ways. And yeah, over the last year, I've just really fallen into an aesthetic that feels like home to me. And this is a very long-winded way of telling you that I just feel very happy and very confident in the way that my home style is evolving, the way that my fashion sense has been evolving over the last year. It just feels like I'm coming home and I'm finding something that feels so authentic to me. And I honestly, like that is the year of turning 25. Like take that sentiment that I just described, apply it to every single area of my life. That has been what turning 25 has felt like in my brain all year. Anyway, I have ordered these lovely lovely prints off of Etsy because I want to make this gallery wall. Oh yeah, I told that whole story, I said that whole anecdote because I wanted to tell you guys that I have been trying to figure out terms to describe my home style because it's a mix of two things I really really, or three things I really 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 like. One is sort of like a southwestern decor style. That's the way my parents house is decorated. My parents house, because this is my mom's taste, is head to toe just like western style and it has been my whole life and I now I love it. I also really love cottagecore and I love like quaint British countryside cottage. So combining all three of those we have like western cottagecore meets British but I'm gonna say Scottish for obvious reasons. Scottish countryside cottagecore. That's where the the middle of that Venn diagram is where my home style is. And when I have a house of my own one day, you guys are gonna see. I mean, I'm trying to do it in my apartment right now, but once I have a house of my own one day, you guys are gonna see. And even in my like fashion sense, I feel like I'm feeling more of that. So anyway, Western meets Scottish cottagecore. And the prints that I have ordered to make this gallery wall are really embody those vibes. I had to climb in on the passenger side because the car, Next to me is too close, probably my fault. Probably parked too far over to one side. Although if I did, it's only because the car that used to be on this side was too close. This parking lot is tiny, and I'm five foot nine, which means climbing. Oh my God. I just turned the car on with my foot. Struck gold with the picture frames. I just got nine picture frames for $22. I did really, really well with the five by sevens. I'm gonna go to Target right now. One, because I'm already out. Two, because I'm driving by myself today and I deserve a little treat for that. Three, I did not straight gold in the eight by 10 department. Just wanna see what they have. And four, I need to get something that Matt and I can eat for dinner. And I also need to hurry because these errands are taking longer than I thought they would. For some reason, I am in my third year of living in this area. And for some reason, I still think in my head, okay, this is country girl math, okay? You've heard of girl math, this is country girl math. If I have four errands to run and they're all within a three mile radius of each other, then there's no way that's gonna take me more than an hour, hour, 20 minutes top. Maybe in Gloucester, sweetheart, not in Arlington, Virginia. Literally, listen, I'm so grateful for where I live, but I cannot wait to get out of the city. I just pulled up to Target and I was re-watching that last clip and I realized how anxious I sounded and how fast I was speaking and how loud I was being because of how anxious I was from driving all day. I apologize, I'm getting it back together now. All right, I'm heading to Target. I'm gonna be very fast. I gotta get mouthwash, something to eat for dinner. I would like a bag of salt and vinegar chips and I'm gonna look for eight by 10 picture frames and that's it. I'm not allowed to get anything else. These are the best salt and vinegar chips in existence. I've tried them all. My personal favorite mouthwash brand, I use the whitening one and Matt just uses regular. And we're actually going to Fergus's first obedience class tonight, so we're not gonna be home to cook dinner. I've never used these Target meal kit bags before, but I thought it would be fun to try. And now we look for picture frames. Why are you being a bitey puppy? I'm sorry, your teeth hurt. Hi guys, I got back a little while ago. I did some work and then I just had some laying on the couch time, which was nice because I was super, just kind of amped up after the driving. I ended up being out for about three hours today because the traffic ended up being kind of bad on the way back, which is the longest amount of time that I've spent out like driving on my own in, I don't even know how long. So I'm really proud of myself for doing that. But yeah, had a little decompression time. Now I'm sitting outside with the bean. Matt and I have to go to obedience class soon. Today is the first week of Fergus's puppy kit 
kindergarten. It's like beginner level obedience school. But tonight is night one and it's no dogs allowed. It's actually human only. And we're, I guess they're gonna be talking about what to expect from the rest of the class. I'm not sure, honestly. I was kind of surprised when we got the email saying that night one of obedience school is only humans. Hey Ferg. I feel so bad for him because I know his teeth must hurt so bad with how mouthy he's being. I would say it's been a good day. I drove successfully, didn't have any issues, crossing off all the stuff I've been procrastinating from my to-do list, and it feels really nice. <gasps> Fergus! Mommy and Daddy are home, and it's time for your dinner! So we just got home. It's about seven. I've changed into my comfy clothes for the night. Usually I only wear my glasses at night. Because I was driving today, I wore them all day. I'm just reminded of how much I like them. I don't usually wear my glasses every day because this is gonna sound weird, but I actually like not knowing what's going on outside of my bubble. It kind of makes me anxious sometimes if I'm just like walking out or whatever, out and about on the street and I can see, <laughs> I have 20-20 vision. It makes me more anxious because I can see everything going on. Whereas when I don't wear my glasses on a day to day, I can only see what's going on like five or 10 feet in front of me. Does that make sense? Matthew is heating up dinner. I knew we weren't gonna wanna cook after we came back from puppy training today. Hey, this is actually looking kind of sick. This is the one that I got. It said serves three plus people. What do you think about that, Matthew? Uh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I've learned to never trust the serving recommendations on a recipe. Matt eats for three people. Sometimes more. Look at Fergus, just just wanted to get something, just hanging out just in case. Anything falls from my hand. Just in case. While Matt heats up our gourmet dinner, you're my, you might be Matthew Gordon, but to me you're Gordon Ramsay. You're my Matthew Gordon Ramsay. Huh. While he does that, I'm gonna show you my frames. These three are gonna be for the office. I think I'm gonna put a wedding picture in this one and just put it on my desk. And then these are the frames I got from Goodwill and I really went overboard a little bit because again, they were just all such a good price and so many good sizes and whatever I don't use for this project, I'll just keep because um, I will use them for something. So I love this wooden one. I really love these sort of vintage gold ones. This one has this like oval overlay, some wood. I don't know what I'm gonna use this for, but I just really liked the Plaid. thought this was super cute. So I need to disinfect all of these, disinfect the counter, disinfect the Target ones. I will work on all of that probably tonight or tomorrow morning. Hey little guy. What's going on? What's going on? He thinks I've got some pork in my hands. Fergus, come here. He's like strangely fixated, put his nose up in his corner. Does he smell the pulled pork? Well, you, see, do you see this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, attack! Attack of the Fergus! Attack of the Fergus! Sweet little clip here. Sweet little baby. Oh, Sweet little okay. baby. This is a really thick sweatshirt, so I can't feel the, the teeth. It needs to be. It looks like one of those ones where you see, like, police officers use <laughs> in the it's videos. Really hard. <laughs> yeah. He's actually looking quite big when he sits down on the other. Doesn't he? He's, he's almost 30 pounds, guys. He was 27 pounds a couple days ago. Almost oh. 30 pounds! All right, y'all, we're gonna eat dinner, have some family time, rewatch NCIS, and I'd like to be in bed with a book by 9.30 at the latest. So I hope you enjoyed joining me on this just super chill day in my life. Let me know what else you'd like to see me vlog. I am really trying to get back into a consistent routine. I'm gonna eat that entire bag of salt and vinegar chips tonight. I'm not gonna have a single regret, and I'm really excited about that. So we are rewatching NCIS. We're currently in season three at the end of it, so stuff is like starting to get pretty good. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. I will talk to you guys really, really soon. Bye!